Okay, so there was a request to figure out how to make custom navigation bars. Specifically, someone was trying to figure out how to create a bar that looked like this. So I had a title here, and over here we could put two buttons. And notice that they're on the same level. So the, the new method of putting you know, bar button items, or I don't really remember what they're called now, but the new method of putting buttons up here actually places them up. So in general, the entire new navigation bar system is pretty restrictive. So what we're going to work on is essentially a way to create completely custom bars and programmatic unwinding. Um, oh, it's not called unwinding anymore, or dismissing now. So uh, program programmatic unwinding, dismissing of view. So kind of going deeper into navigation and coming out of the navigation. Um, so this is going to be probably about a 10-15 minute tutorial, so you have to bear with me. But here's the end product of what we're working on. I want to be able to create a home view that will move into a destination view. If that destination view has a title, some buttons directly to the right. Notice they're not up here. The title's not down here. And I could have put anything in here. This is a completely custom navigation bar. And this back button is um, also custom. You can just, you can, I could have put anything here. I could have put the word potato if I wanted. Once I click it, it'll go back. Now one thing to note is that if you're using this canvas, uh, going forward and back with navigation link doesn't seem to work multiple times on the canvas, but if you plug in your phone and you use the, or use one of the simulators, uh, that whole problem goes away. So th that's a glitch in here. Uh, it's not a one-time deal, it's just an issue with this canvas. So let's go ahead and get started, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and get started and create a new project. So new project. Um, I'm going to say single view app. The product name we'll call this custom nav and say uh, programmatic nav. Okay. Make sure you pick Swift and Swift UI, and these are kind of irrelevant for now. And we'll just call this, uh, or should put on the, we'll put it on the desktop, create. And so, first things first, so smaller. I'm going to go ahead and keep everything in one file just for the sake of not having to flip through in this navigator. But usually you would create, you know, one file for the um, the main view, your content view, the default name for it, but one file for the home view, one file for maybe the destination, one file for any custom views you might be making. I'm going to keep them all in one file here um, just, you know, for the sake of organization and time. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get rid of both of those. And let's hit resume so we can check out the canvas, okay? So I'm going to call this, I'm going to go ahead and call this, we'll say, first view. I'll name it first view. Or we'll leave it a content view for now. And then note that content view is going to be our first view, okay? I'm going to create our second view. We're going to call this destination view. I'm going to create a third view called custom navigation view, okay? So I'm going to change the text here so we know when we're on one versus the other. So let's just say home. This one will say destination. And let's go ahead and click resume. So when I this canvas right here is displaying this uh, just the content view. So I resume. Okay, you should say home. First thing we're going to do, once it updates, there we go. So we'll create a navigation view, okay? I'm going to take that navigation view. I'm going to put the text inside of that. But we actually need a navigation link instead. Let's just go ahead and say navigation link. Okay. That navigation link, it's just another type of button. So it's a button. And that button, its destination will be destination view. So... So we'll have a button, so if I, if I were to preview here, now I have, inside of content view, I have one big navigation view, and inside of it is a button of type navigation link that goes to destination view. So when I click this, I should see the word destination. Sure enough, I do. Back, okay. So that's the first part that brought us forward, okay. And then what I like to do is I like to put a background so I know exactly how much of the screen everything is taking up. So what I did is I put a Z stack so that I can put the navigation link. It still stays in the center, okay? But I'm going to put a color in the background. I'm going to make this one 
Let's make this one gray. Okay. And we'll say edges, ignore, safe area, all. That'll let it expand all the way up. Okay. Um, the next thing we'll do is we will go into the destination view. We will also put a navigation view. Okay. And so that navigation view, I'm going to give that view a title. So, well, the reason we're giving it a title is because, so the title we give it is not going to be this title. It's not going to be the title that we we're hoping for in the end product when I go here. So this title is not going to actually be what I put inside this navigation bar title. It is if I wanted to use the standard navigation bar, but I'm using a custom one. So I'm just going to write anything. I'm going to write this will be hidden, okay? But the reason I did that is because you actually can't use this next one. For some reason right now, you can't use navigation bar hidden until you've set a title. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say true. And so what happens now when I click home, now it's gone. So the next thing I am going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and give, I'm gonna put a Z stack outside of the entire navigation view. Okay, and what I'm the, the reason I'm doing that now uh, is because now on top of the navigation view, I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, a new view, and this one's just going to it's going to be whatever I want to actually show up on the screen. So I'm going to comment this. I'm going to say this navigation view is just a formality. And the reason it's a formality is because we need it in order to be able to unwind, go forward and back. This is the whole point of this is just to make sure our our, um, our phone understands that we are now deeper one level in the navigation process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this say we are at the destination. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. We can put anything really, we can just make it say nothing. Okay. Run. Here I am. We are at the destination. So the next thing I'm going to do is on top of we are at the destination, I want to put this custom navigation view that I have yet to use. So custom navigation view. Okay. So now when I go here, you'll see that directly on top of we are at the destination is hello world. So let's go ahead and move that out of the way. So let's just focus on this custom navigation view and getting that all the way to the top. So just so we can understand the bounds of our destination view, just one last thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put a color.blue.edges, ignore, off. And so we don't have to keep clicking this button to go forward. Why don't we just go ahead and say that our previewer is gonna be displaying the destination view. So that way, every time it loads, it just loads what we're looking for. So now let's go ahead and focus on setting this custom navigation view to actually look like a custom navigation view. First things first, let's, uh, let's create a VStack inside of it. VStack, we'll put a spacer underneath, and on top we'll put, uh, say, it's just a text. Okay, and what was requested is we make it say this word here. So let's create a new variable inside of the structure. So if our title is going to be equal to N A C H R I C H T N. Okay, and so this text will say title. Okay, now we resume. And we'll see the title up top. Okay, we want to push that title to the side, so we'll put that in H stack. Okay, put a spacer inside here. Okay, and now it's pushed to the side. We'll give the H stack some padding. Okay, and we will give that title, we'll give it a better font so it matches up better. That font is going to say system, we'll do um, a system font. Uh, we want, I want those size and the weight, I don't really care for the design parameter. Do size of 35, we'll do weight of bold. There we go. 
There we go, now we're starting to look a bit like that, okay? And then on this side, what we can do is we can we can create in two individual buttons, but what I want is long term. I want this to be uh, very uh, reusable. So what we'll do instead is we'll create something here that says var buttons, and buttons will be equal to an array of buttons that have an image as their view. Okay. And sorry, I should have I should put that. So I'm just declaring a type, but it currently has no value. Okay. And so what we'll do here is we'll say for each, uh, and we'll it's essentially like a for loop. So we'll scroll through uh, these buttons. So for each buttons dot count, we'll say uh, I in. I'll put it up top for the sake of cleanliness. And it'll say let's just say we we want to display. So you know if I, I could easily just say, show me a text that says A. Okay. Well, the biggest thing is the minute I put this up here but did not, let's just oh, go ahead and say it has no value for now. So when I give it a default value, I don't have to actually, you know, it has a default value, so I don't have to declare any value when I instantiate it up here inside of destination view. But let's let's now go ahead and, and actually uh, let's let's give it a, let's give it a value. So we want to actually have some buttons inside this custom navigation view. So what we'll do up here is it's in the destination view that we'll decide what kind of buttons there are. Okay, so so we'll say var buttons will be equal to and we'll say we'll, get, we'll put two buttons. So the first button. Okay. Um, actually, I like it better if I do the drag and drop. So the first button will go right here. Okay, and we'll put an image instead. So the image will be. Uh, we'll do an SF symbol system name. And we'll just use uh, let's go SF symbols. We have a lip. Okay, this was the one that was requested. Ellipses circle dot fill. Okay, and the action, we won't, we won't put any action for now, okay? And then we'll put a second button because that was also requested, and if you look at the request, it was this. So uh, we'll get as close as we can. So we'll put square and square and pencil. There's no circle around it, but it'll have to do. So this one will be square dot and dot pencil, okay? And what we can do is this custom when we declare that or when we you know use this custom navigation view, let's say, hey, if you're gonna use me, you need to tell me what buttons I'm gonna be displaying. So the buttons will be the buttons that we set up up here. That should get rid of this error. Left buttons. Let's go ahead and hit resume and see what happens. All right, for now, just to, to avoid any problems, we'll, we'll leave these buttons declared down here. We'll just say the buttons equal. Okay. That should be good to go. So now when I hit try again, you know, it seems like nothing happened or nothing changed, but what I can do now is I can say, so I now I created the title, I put a spacer, and the next thing I said is put, for each of these buttons, I want you to put that button. I say self dot, because it's within a closure, okay. Doesn't look like it's there, but it is. We can just change the foreground color to black. Sure enough, there they are right there, okay? Uh, and what I could do is I can just say adding, let's say trailing has a length of 10, okay? And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create a back button because that's the whole point of this, you know? 
I, I created this whole view up here as a custom navigation view, but I, you need to be able to go forward and backward the same way that the non-custom navigation lets you. So in what I kept in here when I was showing this, uh, this kind of what we're trying to make here, was two lines of code that we're going to need to keep, okay? So I'm going to copy this first one. I'll put these in the description, okay? So this first one is going to allow, I personally, I don't see any problem with putting this inside of every single view. So I put this in every single, am I going to use it in every view? Maybe not now, but maybe later. And it's just one line of code. So what it's letting us do is it's letting us reference this presentation mode of the overall environment. And that presentation mode, if you see in the second line we're going to be copying, is going to allow us to execute the dismiss function. So now that I have that, what I can say, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep this here in the custom navigation view, but I'm gonna comment it out for now, okay? And what I need to do here is next to title, I wanna do one more button, okay? I'm just gonna copy and paste this from here. And this new button is gonna be a chevron.left. Okay, and the action inside of it will be this code that I just commented out. If I hit resume, you'll see that we now have, we've got to make it black, this button has to be black, so dot foreground color is dot black. Okay, I'm going to just say dot padding, yeah. uh, it's trailing of 10. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. And if, right, remember, right now we're just re we're reviewing this as the destination view, um, you know, as if it's, it is the home view. But let's pretend we were coming from content view. So content view. And I was coming from home. Now that unwind or that, that dismiss right here, wherever we had right here, self.presentation mode dot wrapped value dot dismiss. I could just do that and it goes right back. Okay. The last thing I, I want to do is sometimes you have views where you can get to that view, um, you know, by navigating towards it, or sometimes you get it and you don't necessarily want a back view, or sometimes you just have a view that you want to get to and determine whether or not you want the ability to go back. So what I was going to do, the last thing here is I was just going to make one more variable inside of custom navigation view. And that variable is going to be is destination. Okay. And I'm going to say, unless you tell me otherwise, the destination is false. And I'm only going to, and then the next thing I'm going to do is from here I'm going to say, if this is the destination, meaning that I came here from somewhere else, then I want you to show me this chevron, okay? But otherwise, I don't want to see that chevron, okay? So what that means is that if I go back into destination view, I'm going to create that same variable. I'm going to say var is destination. And I'm going to assume that it's false. Now, what that the, the implication here is, I'm going to come up here to destination view, and when I get when I go to destination view from content view, I will set is destination to true. And what that means is that if I were to click on this right now, once this canvas updates, once I click on it, I should see that chevron. So. The reason it's not showing this because I need to I need to pass that through all the views. So is destination destination is, is. so I'm saying the is destination value for the custom navigation view is going to be equal to whatever the destination view is destination is. And that one has a default value of false unless I set it to true, like I did up here. So now when I click home, I do or when I click, sorry, when I click, uh, the, you know, the, this button in the center, so let's say, we'll make it say, go to destination. Now I get this arrow. But if I were to go here and go to this destination view without saying that this is the, the end destination, then there is no arrow because it has a default value of false. If you have any questions, just shoot me a message, all right? Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.